Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be mastering two semi-automatic shotguns in Battlefield 4 on my quest to master all primary weapons in BF4. We'll be starting off with the Sega 12K. This is a magazine-fed 12-gauge shotgun, and it has eight rounds in a magazine plus one in the chamber. It fires at 200 rounds per minute, and it shoots nine pellets per shot. Now, the pellet count varies depending on what kind of shotgun you're using. It's probably one of the more important stats with shotguns in general. Each pellet in close quarter can do up to 18 damage if you're using buckshot, which I am in this video, for both shotguns. That means for the Sega 12K that you have the potential of doing 162 damage per shot. Easily a one-shot kill per shot but you have to hit center mass. Now your one shot kill potential tapers off very dramatically. As soon as targets start getting further and further away from you, you're gonna start having to hit them three, four, five, and even six times depending on how far away they are. However, you can try and counteract this effect a little bit by using different chokes on your shotgun. At first I started off here with the modified choke, which uh, reduces the spread of your shot a little bit. It means that you have to be more accurate, especially in close quarters, which can be difficult for some people and certainly got me killed a few times here and there. Uh, and then eventually when you see me using the coyote sight on this weapon It's when I've upgraded to using the full choke to try and increase the range on this weapon as much as possible Now even though the chokes reduce the spread on your shot increasing your effective range That doesn't mean that the damage drop-off isn't still going to be significant you drop off to six damage per pellet at 30 meters. That means even if every single pellet hit your target, which they won't at 30 meters, but even if each one was going to, you'd only be doing 54 damage. So you're still gonna need to like four or five, even six shot targets that are beyond that range. So it's not really worthwhile, kind of the shotgun basics. So you gotta get up close and personal in your opponent's face. And that's part of the tactics of running with a kit like this. You can't stay outside. You can't try and run through long corridors or big outdoor open areas, because if you run into a target, you're gonna lose that firefight unless they're right in your face. And there we go, popping out the Sega 12K Mastery Dog Tag. Again, that's 500 kills if you're looking to get the Mastery Dog Tag yourself. And that will take a while. I highly recommend playing on Team Deathmatch. Or if you have a good squad, perhaps a squad of friends, and you want to play a game mode like Rush that can get you close quarters with some infantry, then you'll probably do all right there as well. The Sega really shines when you manage to flank a good squad of enemies. A full squad, four or five guys at a time, this shotgun can make quick work of them provided that you get the jump on them. Each shot can be a kill with this gun and that gives you amazing killing potential provided that you just don't miss your shots. Now shotguns have always been a slightly more confusing weapon in Battlefield. Aside from the fact that not a lot of maps really cater to close quarter combat so it makes them a little bit less effective simply because of the map design in the game. But uh, also the spread on shotguns is highly unpredictable and also the hip fire accuracy is again highly unpredictable with these weapons. Having too many random characters Characteristics in a weapon's stats is generally not a good balance plan overall and I think it's probably why shotguns just haven't been that popular weapons in Battlefield in general. It's not to say you can't do good with them and I, I did fine in a lot of rounds. There just are a lot of times where you shoot at somebody and you're like alright that's a kill move on to the next target and the guy doesn't go down so you got to continue shooting at the same target and it's usually because you get a weird spread on that particular shot or you tried to hit fire somebody and the shot just went off at a weird angle. And that's the kind of unpredictability that I personally don't like about the weapons. Now there's also been a lot of confusion as to what types of rounds should you use with a shotgun. There's flechette, there's buckshot, then there's frag rounds, there's slug rounds. I would say if you're being serious about using shotguns, just forget about slug rounds and frag rounds. Focus on buckshot and flechette. And between those two choices, I can find very few reasons to use flechette over buckshot. It travels a little bit faster through the air um, and it does slightly better damage at further ranges but again that's not really what you want a shotgun for you want it for that high damage capability in close quarters and buckshot just seems to be a little bit more useful for getting those one shot kills in general there's a few shotguns where flechette might be slightly more beneficial if you're running a very specific setup now if you weren't watching closely you might have noticed that i've switched over to the dbv12 the dbv12 and the sega 12k 
are extremely similar shotguns. In fact, it took me a little while to try and figure out what the differences were between these two weapons. If we put the SimThick stats side by side, you'll see that they have the exact same rate of fire. They shoot the same amount of pellets per shot. Uh, one gun, the Sega 12K, has eight rounds in a mag, and the DBV-12 has 10 rounds in a mag. So that's kind of substantial in terms of a difference. Also, the DBV-12 reloads for its long reload slightly faster. Not really a big issue right there. Uh, and the recoil on the DBV-12 is slightly higher in terms of its first shot recoil. Now, considering that pretty much every shot you take with this gun is going to be counted as a first shot unless you're shooting it as fast as you possibly can, you're going to be hitting almost twice as much recoil per shot with the DBV-12. All in all, though, shotgun recoil just isn't that big of a deal, and I run the angled foregrip on both the weapon setups, so I'm really just not experiencing that much recoil in general. If it's something that's really getting to you, then maybe use the Sega 12K. Otherwise, I would just say if you have both guns, use the DBV-12. I tried to test the cone of fire difference. Uh, unfortunately, there just aren't a lot of stats available on SimThick. It was really hard to try and get the actual cone stats for shotguns. Um, so that's basically the spread of the pellets when you fire the weapon. I tested it out in the test range. I couldn't really see any noticeable difference between the two weapons. So if there is no cone difference in the two guns, then I would just say use the DBV-12. Again, my full setup is angled foregrip, full choke, and red dot sight of your choice. You could use the iron sights if you want to be cool and look authentic, but I gotta say the red dot is just a little bit more useful. Back in the day when shotguns were a little bit more useful, their spread was more predictable and you didn't have to be so freaking precise with them, uh, you could get away with running iron sights and be pretty much just as effective as you would be with a red dot sight. But unfortunately, Battlefield 4 kind of screwed up shotguns in my opinion, so you got to do whatever you can to improve your accuracy with these weapons as much as possible. And again, whenever you have the opportunity, aim down sights. It will be more accurate in general. Hip fire can be useful for getting that quick shot off, but it's just so unpredictable, I don't like to rely on it. Now, if you really want to farm some kills with your shotgun, I highly recommend Domination or Team Deathmatch on some of the good close quarter maps. Uh, the ones that I like personally are Siege of Shanghai, if you get a game where people aren't just abusing the roof top camping situation. You can usually keep it pretty close quarter in that map. Rogue transmission can be good as long as you stay close into the buildings. It's great for clearing out those little two-story portable buildings. And then I also like Dawnbreaker again. If you stay towards the center of the map, you can get a lot of good close quarter action. Sadly though, these maps just don't compare to some of the awesome shotgun kill sprees you could go on in Battlefield 3 on No Shark Canals or Karg Island. Certainly miss those days, but it'll be interesting to see what becomes of shotgun gameplay with Battlefield Hardline. I was certainly enjoying it a lot more in the beta. I'm sure they're going to balance out shotguns a little bit more before the final launch of the game, but even so, I'm pretty excited to see just what is available and how the dynamics shift up. Now, hopefully when Hardline comes out, we can get some more accurate shotgun spread statistics. It's something that's really difficult to try and test on your own because uh, getting those shotgun spread indicators is very unpredictable in Battlefield 4. It's just really hard to tell. Uh, what the overall spray is going to be like and how it compares to other weapons. So if we can get that in stat format for Battlefield Hardline, it'll be much easier to try and deduce which shotguns are better for what situations rather than just having to rely on the uh, less than adequate descriptions. Now sadly, the DBV-12 does not have a mastery dog tag, one of my many pet peeves with Battlefield 4, because getting 500 kills with any weapon is a pretty tall order, and all the guns in Battlefield 3 had mastery dog tags, most of the guns in BF4 have mastery dog tags, there's just some that don't have them for some reason, and it's not really explained. But anyway, I got 500 kills with both guns, it took quite a while, but uh, now I get to check those off the list. Don't forget to tell me which guns you'd like me to master next by leaving a comment in in the comments section and as always guys i'll see you next time this is level cap signing off